Welcome everyone to the second meeting of the semester. And the topic of our meeting today is um, Pathways to Public Service. And I'll just introduce myself. Some of you know me, some of you don't know me. My name is Sarah. I am a junior at UW and I am majoring in psychology and minoring in global health. And I am um, the president of Peace Corps Advocates. And here with me is Kelly. Um, so she'll be just joining from my computer and she is also on our exec board and she is our events person and she created this whole PowerPoint. So she's fantastic. Um, but moving on the PowerPoint. So just a little bit of an agenda. We're going to be talking about a few different things here and we have many different speakers, which is really, really exciting. Um, a lot of different people that have a lot of experience and expertise on these topics and they have a lot of information to share. So first we'll have some speakers talk about the International Internship Program, then the AmeriCorps and then the Peace Corps. And afterwards we will go over some possible announcements. So to start out with the International Internship Program, we'll have Nathaniel speaking and Emily as well. And Nathaniel is, and again, they will all introduce themselves a little bit more thoroughly, but just a general overview. Uh, Nathaniel is an advisor and program coordinator, and he helps students explore internships. And he will also introduce Emily. And then when we transition to, oh, sorry, I was just gonna go through all of it, but Kate, did you want me to do it all together or should we go um, one by one? Why don't, um, I don't know. <clears throat> why don't we go, go ahead. If I let you do the whole thing, okay. and then it'll be, we won't have to be jumping back and forth. Sure. So I'll just finish the entire PowerPoint and then I'll go back to Nathaniel and um, Emily. My bad, Sarah. Sorry I cut it. Oh, there. no worries at all. Oh, that was a bit confusing. I should have explained <laughs> that at the beginning. And that's my bad. Uh, so then we'll move on to AmeriCorps and we'll have Emily Green speak. So we have a few different Emilys, I think. And she is an undergraduate from UW-Madison and she has 16 years of experience with the AmeriCorps. And then also speaking for AmeriCorps will be Carl and Annika. And then last but not least, we'll be talking about the Peace Corps with Katie and Kate. And then we'll have a little bit of a wrap up. So we'll go back to just so everyone kind of isn't confused. Sorry, that was a lot of information, but again, we're starting out with the International Internship Program with Nathaniel and Emily. All right, thank you so much for the intro, Sarah. Um, like Sarah mentioned, my name is Nathaniel Lytle. I'm an advisor with the International Internship Program, and I advise students who are exploring internships in Asia as well as Southern and Eastern Africa. I'm going to kind of focus on education internships for today's presentation um, and tell you all about uh, the International Internship Program or IIP. Uh, so some of the services that IIP offers. As our name suggests, we connect undergrads, students with internship opportunities all over the world um, and help students explore international internships kind of regardless of, of where they're at in the, in the exploration stage, whether it's just occurring to them for the first time or whether they have a really well-defined plan about where and when they, they want to go somewhere. We assist students in earning academic credit and we're just in a support, supportive advising role throughout the, the internship process. Um, again, just in the early exploration stage while students are abroad um, and upon return um, and in, into their re-entry process uh, after their internship experience. We help connect students and, and, and target specific scholarships as well. I should uh, at least acknowledge the the pandemic's ongoing impact and just kind of give you an update on where our, our programming currently stands. Um, the campus travel ban remain, remains in place through July 1st. 
Um, so we currently don't, do not have any interns abroad. We're kind of looking ahead to fall 2021 and are hopeful that we will be sending some interns somewhere um, this fall. If that sounds very ambiguous, uh, it, it is. Um, I don't wanna say any more than that because uh, we've gotten our hopes up before and, and uh, here we are, but uh, some interns somewhere this fall, but uh, there will be a, a final decision on that from the university um, coming sometime this summer. So for right now, we've converted a number of our opportunities over to virtual internships and going into 2022, as we return to some kind of normal-ish um, travel situation, we expect, uh, you know, we'll kind of have a hybrid of opportunities, um, some virtual, some in person, and going towards summer 22, we expect more and more of our opportunities to be in person. So I'm going to uh, highlight and, and talk a little bit about some of our IIP cultivated opportunities. And what I mean by IIP cultivated opportunities is simply these are internships that our office has developed with various organizations. It could be a, uni a university, um, a company, small company, large company, um, an NGO, really any organization that oftentimes has some kind of university connection. Maybe there's an alumni connection or a faculty staff connection. Um, and we have partnered with that organization to develop and create and be able to offer an internship specifically for um, UW-Madison students. And so on our database, uh, and any undergrad with a, with a net ID will get you in there um, and you can peruse um, our many opportunities that are open exclusively to Badgers, uh, to UW-Madison students. Um, for our cultivated opportunities, there's automatic grants. Um, some, some guaranteed funding. Um, and as I mentioned right now, we're kind of all, all virtual for the summer. Uh, there's, there's no cost for those virtual internships. Um, the only cost would be for credit um, if students elect to pursue credit, um, but that's, that's optional as well. So getting into a few of these opportunities, all of these, I'm just gonna kind of like preview them and, and tease them a little bit. Um, Emily will talk more about IUEC since she is interning there this semester. Um, but otherwise, you can, you can go to our database um, and, and find a lot more information, um, kind of research any of these uh, opportunities and, and read up and, and see if it would be a good fit for you. Um, this, this first opportunity is based out of Madrid, Spain, called English Social Club or ESC. It's an English teaching and curriculum development intern role. So all of these opportunities, again, for the summer are virtual, um, but going uh, into the fall and spring. Uh, some may be virtual, some may be in person. Um, TBD on that, but hopefully all of them will be in person for next summer. Uh, but basically uh, leading, leading instruction and, and kind of uh, tutoring and having a kind of general English fluency conversations with a variety of ages and, and skill levels. Uh, this opportunity is still taking <coughs> for this summer. Um, so not too late to apply for a virtual opportunity for this summer. Guangwai Pacelli High School is a um, kind of American style high school that has a partnership um, with Pacelli High School in Stevens Point. Um, as, as strange as, as that may sound, um, Guangwai Pacelli High School in Foshan, China um, is we, we've partnered with them to uh, send interns to have an advising role. So again, it's uh, virtual for this summer, but hopeful that this one um, will be in person as soon as this fall. Um, but the students at Guangwai Pacelli High School, um, high school students who are aspiring to study um, at, at American universities. And so helping them with uh, college applications, um, helping them with general English fluency and just kind of be, uh, be a, you know, an American um, voice to, to someone that students can ask uh, kind of any, any questions about American culture, especially uh, collegiate life as they're, uh, you know, preparing to potentially um, go, to, go to university in the States. Um, for the in-person opportunity, there's uh, some compensation provided, including housing, meals, and airfare. So, uh, 
you can, again, for any of these opportunities, you can look at our database and, and get more specifics um, as far as compensation and specific uh, tasks and responsibilities. Um, but just a little preview um, of this one. Another um, opportunity for this summer um, is based out of Beijing with GoToCo, which is a, a company um, that focuses on global cultural exchange. So for this summer, it's a, it's a marketing role in just um, kind of helping GoToCo uh, get connected with uh, uni university students who, who would be interested in uh, coming over to, to China and teaching at GoToCo's uh, summer camps. Uh, but there's a real emphasis on cultural exchange and um, really GoToCo puts a big value on um, having, uh, having students who, um, you know, want to, want to see a little bit more of China than just uh, kind of a typical tourism track might, might have you uh, see. Um, so again, virtual for this summer, um, it will be in person next summer and uh, have a strong uh, teaching component in one of the, in one of the summer camps. Okay, IUEC is the International University Exchange Center that's based out of Seoul, South Korea. Um, currently virtual, hopefully uh, in, in person uh, going into 2022. Uh, Emily Arneson is a, a current uh, virtual intern and she's going to share a little bit more about her experiences, just kind of um, share what it's been like to intern um, virtually with IUEC. Emily, I'll, I'll let you chime in. Okay, thank you. Uh, so as Nathaniel said, I'm Emily and I'm one of the interns working with IUEC right now. Um, for background on me, I'm a sophomore here at UW and I am majoring in English language and linguistics and poli-sci. So with my internship at IUEC, this was actually my first time applying for and getting an internship in general, not just through I IP. So that was real nice. <laughs> and at IUEC, I am specifically working with mostly Korean high school graduates who plan to enter the UW school system next year. So for them to come to the US for college, they need to have a passing score on the IELTS exam or the International English Language Testing System. So there are four parts of the exam, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And I'm specifically in charge of teaching the students with the speaking section. So I have eight students and I work with four of them Monday, Wednesday, and the other four Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, so because the time zone difference, I work 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., which honestly isn't much of a struggle. It doesn't interfere with any classes, so it's really nice. I just get to work late at night. I'm a night owl. Um, and then Fridays are my prep days for next week, so I don't work then. So besides being responsible for teaching the students, I also need to prepare my own lesson plans and write daily and monthly reports about their progress. So I plan to become an ESL teacher after I graduate. I'm in the process of getting my TESOL certificate. So this internship has been so incredibly helpful in gaining applicable and relevant skills for my future career path, such as like patience, communication skills, time management, leadership, et cetera. So I have had academic tutoring and ESL conversational experience before this, but I lacked an actual teaching experience so I am incredibly, incredibly grateful I got to experience this as it really helped me realize I really do enjoy teaching and this is the career path I do want to pursue later on. So personally, I am a very shy and introverted person, but with this opportunity, I really had to come out of my shell to take charge like over a class like this. So it's been a good thing that experience helped me open up and become more confident in myself and my teaching skills. So overall, I really have really enjoyed my experience um, helping the students with their English speaking skills. Um, and I'm sad when this ends the semester. Um, as for like the class atmosphere and format, it really is a low stress environment. As someone who is similar in age with these students, like at most they're like two years younger than me, I do not see myself as this like authoritative figure. I feel like that's kind of weird. Rather, it's just like casual and friendly like two friends speaking with each other like it's not like a super luxury class like we have a lot of like conversational practice so I really get to know them on a personal level especially since it is a one-on-one -on -one class format and I think that's really valuable to have such a close one-on-one -on -one connection with them not only for knowing specifically what they can improve on 
but also just for having a good relationship with them too. Um, the students are really, really friendly and nice and very eager to learn. So on that side, I really haven't experienced any issues so far. Um, I really enjoy teaching them. Um, I have had a, a really good experience with IVC so far and the internship program in general. And I hope I can continue this during, in the near future. I'll probably reapply again like next fall. <laughs> uh, I think that's it, thank you. Oh, thank you, Emily. That's really awesome to hear. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get through the rest of my presentation and if anyone has any questions for, for me or, or Emily, um, if you wanna ask her more specifically about her experience with IUC, but thank you, Emily, that's, that's great to hear. Um, looking to the future here and summer 2022 in-person options, um, I mentioned these because uh, these, are, these are internships we haven't been able to transfer over to virtual, um, but looking ahead, we're hopeful that we will once again have in-person um, English teaching internships in Dominican Republic um, and Ecuador and Japan, ones that we've uh, sent interns uh, on in the past. Again, these are ones you can find, uh, all of those opportunities you can find on our ILP database. Some including uh, for, for the summer yet, um, the deadline's coming up here at the end of the month. Should also mention that study abroad, IAP, International Academic Programs, um, offer a number of um, internships um, in conjunction with uh, study abroad experiences as well. So um, a part-time internship um, is, is something that students uh, may consider while they're studying abroad. Um, study abroad has a number of intensive uh, language programs um, as well. So um, just, just another uh, consideration, another path to internships and just building up uh, international experience. The Wisconsin in Washington program is another IAP study abroad program, of course, uh, domestically though. Um, but uh, just, just another, um, off, often an option for students who are thinking about public service in, in the future, um, especially those who are interested in, in politics, getting to intern um, kind of where all the action is at in DC. There are uh, summer and, and uh, in semester There's a lot of direct apply opportunities as well. I won't uh, get too much into detail on these, but um, basically this is for more independent option um, for students who may find uh, internships kind of on their own. Um, some of these external opportunities you can find through the IIP database, um, but otherwise these are kind of students hustling or identifying um, options on their own, maybe through networking or individual contacts they, they might have, but it's another uh, common popular route for students to find may come back to uh, IIP looking for credit and kind of looking for that university support and connection. Um, they can get that through the Worldwide Internship Program, which is the three credit online internship course. Um, not, not currently offered because it's for uh, in-person internships only, um, but establishes, you know, university connection, um, provides students with 24 seven emergency support while they're abroad, as well as uh, comprehensive health insurance coverage and um, making students scholarship eligible as well. Applying is super easy. Uh, you apply directly through our database um, and besides just kind of a lot of basic personal information, um, providing your unofficial transcript, resume and cover letter, which we are always happy to help students with. So there's, no, there's no fees to apply um, for any internships or anything like that. Um, mentioned funding, uh, we help students target scholarships and there, a number of our internships have guaranteed funding, um, but there are international, national, local, um, and campus scholarships that IIP students are consistently applying for and receiving. We're all remote right now, obviously, um, but you can shoot us an email with any questions you might have or make an appointment online through Starfish or through our website. Find us on the social medias. Instagram is a, is a good place to check out and um, look at past interns takeovers uh, as they share their experiences and, and uh, just provides a nice kind of day-to-day -day inside look at what an international internship is like. So with that, um, if you have any questions at all for Emily or myself, I think Emily's gonna uh, take off here in uh, 
in just a minute. And so if anyone has any questions specifically for her, I'll, I'll be sticking around until the end here. I have I, more. Oh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I just have more of a comment for, for Emily and Nath Nathaniel um, that uh, Peace Corps was in South Korea, hasn't been there for 40 years, but the, the volunteers who served in, in South Korea are just so connected. And the government, the, the, the institution of South Korea is equally invested in all of those volunteers so that when, when COVID hit, the government of South Korea sent uh, uh, most of, if not all of the uh, former volunteers, COVID kits, COVID health kits, per personal protective equipment, all kinds of um, pieces of uh, important things to stay healthy and like small gifts from, from Korea. And it sounds like from your relationship, Emily, that you're having just a, an equally friendly, um, amazing experience with the, even virtually with the people there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Sarah. So I would just ask, um, cause of course many individuals here, students are interested in potentially the Peace Corps and listening to, the, to your presentation, it seems like there's a lot of correlation between the kinds of experiences you can have and how they can prepare you potentially for an experience in the Peace Corps. And I was wondering if you would be able to touch on that a little bit, because I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, how could this experience specifically help me to kind of learn more about working with individuals from other countries and being culturally sensitive? And how can this experience kind of set me up for success in the Peace Corps? or even potentially help with helping me to kind of stand out, I guess? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I think in, in a lot of ways, um, international internships, especially in the education field, are just a really excellent stepping stone into the Peace Corps. I mean, internships, are, you know, almost first and foremost, are a way to, to try something out, to apply your, your classroom learning and your academic knowledge to really put it to test in the real world. Um, and to see if you're good at something and to see if you, you like something, um, you know, that's, that's kind of what an internship is for in a lot of ways before you, uh, you know, find, you find that you're graduated and you're in this career that just is not a good fit for you. An internship can kind of validate the path you're on or can make you maybe reevaluate as well, which, um, you know, could be unfortunate, but it's just as valuable as, as really learning that you're, that you're in the right field. Um, I, and I think that just the, the cross-cultural piece, um, just the really, um, you know, just the really immersing yourself in, in a new culture um, is such an educational experience, um, not only just learning about the culture of uh, the host country, um, but learning about yourself as well. Um, which, which I know sounds kind of hokey and cliche, but I, I certainly have found it uh, to be true. And I think any, anyone who's had a really rich cultural experience could kind of speak to the same, um, just kind of really opening up your world and, and getting you to see, um, see culture through, through a different lens. And so I think in, in, in that way, it, it's just a really nice kind of um, prelude or intro to, to what uh, you know, a, a full on uh, Peace Corps experience would be like. That's exactly why I asked uh, IIP to participate because because of all of that and the way it's a stepping stone. Um, study abroad too is another um, stepping stone into into Peace Corps or or any sort of um, really any sort of job in, in this day and age. But it's it's great experience. With that, does anyone have any other questions for Nathaniel or Emily before we move on? I think we don't have any more, but if anyone has any questions, you can keep them until the end or put them into the chat um, and maybe we'll be able to answer them later. But so thank you guys so much for speaking about this. And I know I learned a lot and I didn't really know much about 
um, the program before. So I'm really grateful to know more now and kind of know a bit more about my options. And now we'll be switching over to talk about the AmeriCorps and Emily Green will be starting us off. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy Friday afternoon. I know if you're here in Madison, it's gorgeous outside. So um, I'll keep my uh, discussion about AmeriCorps brief. Um, I do honestly think AmeriCorps is another really good option for people who are considering something like the Peace Corps. Um, AmeriCorps really is national service, so it's domestic. It's here in the United States, but it really has a lot of the same fundamentals, I think, um, as Peace Corps. So the idea is that we bring people together to serve the communities here at home. And um, it's in 40,000 communities across the United States. So even if you'd like to stay here in Wisconsin, um, there's, there's lots of opportunities here in Dane County or in broader Wisconsin. Or if you'd like to try a different part of the country, there's opportunities there as well. Um, there's really kind of six main focuses that a lot of the programs um, uh, really are focused on in AmeriCorps. Education, that's the program um, that I served as an AmeriCorps member for and have worked with for the past 16 years. Um, but there's everything, ours is a literacy program, but there's everything from, um, you know, really encouraging students that want to go on to college, first generation college students, STEM and robotics, um, you know, anything you could think of in education after school programs, things like that. Environmental stewardship is a really big one. Um, how do we bring people together to really focus on these huge issues we have with our environment? Healthy futures and wellness. Uh, definitely that was called into service this past year around uh, COVID and some of the responses. Um, economic, economic opportunity. How do we um, create a stability across our communities? Uh, disaster response. Sometimes that's where AmeriCorps is maybe most visible is when there's a national disaster or something going on in the country. AmeriCorps is sometimes called into service. And then also there's programs focusing on veterans and military families. So really connecting them with, um, you know, as they come out of the military, how they can reconnect with their communities. So that's kind of the six main focus areas that AmeriCorps has. <clears throat> why would people want to serve with AmeriCorps? I think there's many great benefits. These are some of the big ones. Uh, you do receive a living allowance. So we realize people still need to pay rent and, um, and uh, eat and live. And so there is a pretty modest living allowance that can cover some of the basic expenses. Um, you do get something called uh, the Siegel AmeriCorps Education Award. So you do get an education award at the end of your service. And this can help pay for either future educational expenses, or if you're in that situation of now having student loans, it can also go towards those as well. Um, while you're in AmeriCorps, and if you do have those student loans, you do not have to be paying them uh, at, when you're an AmeriCorps member. And also they'll pay back any qualified interest um, at the end of your uh, service term that has accrued as well. I think number four is the most important one, professional development. Um, just like um, our last presenter was talking about, I think having experience and having opportunities um, beyond what you did maybe in, um, in your bachelor's degree uh, or your schooling is really important. And you really do get a lot of opportunities to get professional developments and skills. Um, and there's also a lot of connections that AmeriCorps um, can make for you both um, here at the state level with Serve Wisconsin and also throughout the country. And then finally, you're really joining a pretty large alumni network. Um, AmeriCorps has a lot of really like-minded people who are uh, wanting to do national service and give back to their community. And so you do receive some access to some benefits with that, but also just knowing that you're a part of um, this kind of larger organization doing really great things for our country. And then how it works, um, AmeriCorps website has actually just been updated. They kind of rebranded. Um, and so they're, they actually have a pretty good website now that you can go on to and kind of explore this. Um, typically AmeriCorps members uh, serve for about 10 to 12 months. Um, so it, this would probably be something that would make sense either postgraduate or um, if you're taking a break from um, school, uh, this is typically full-time. 
but there are some uh, shorter, maybe summer terms that you could look for as well. And you can look at what locations are available. And you really just go in, you create a profile, you look for opportunities and you can kind of filter those based on what you're looking for, whether it's a geographic area or a type of service. Um, and then you submit your application and you can use that same application to apply for up to 10 different service opportunities um, that you're interested in. Um, so that's just a really quick overview of what AmeriCorps is. Um, you know, as many AmeriCorps uh, programs, there's many AmeriCorps programs throughout the country and each one is a little different. Um, like I said, I was an AmeriCorps member when I graduated from UW-Madison in, I'm gonna date myself, 2001. And, um, and I have had the great privilege of working with AmeriCorps members ever since then. Um, and we have um, somebody who served um, with us here tonight, Annika Kingery. Is, I would love for her to talk a little bit about her experience, um, you know, what this AmeriCorps service meant to her. And, um, you know, then we can open it up and see if you guys have any questions for us. Thanks so much, Emily. Um, so like Emily said, my name is Annika Kingery, um, and I am a proud alumna of uh, the Schools of Hope AmeriCorps project here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I served on the project um, from 2015 to 2016. Um, and I worked as a uh, literacy tutor coordinator. So I coordinated a lot of different community volunteers to tutor students um, at Crestwood Elementary School um, in literacy throughout the year. And I also got to do some tutoring myself. Um, and I absolutely loved my experience. Um, I am a proud UW-Madison grad as well. So um, go Badgers. Um, but basically I decided to serve because um, I had just completed grad school um, in museum education um, and I couldn't find a job. Um, it's not a super large field and I wanted to move back to Madison um, after grad school. And so I was starting to think about my options. Um, and so I, I was kind of thinking about something education related because I had the background in museum education. And so this, project sort of stood out to me. Um, in addition to wanting to do something to kind of give back to my hometown, um, and I had had friends who had served on this project specifically and had really great experiences, so that encouraged me. Um, and then just in general, um, the fact that I would get a, a stipend, a living allowance, um, was was key to me at that point. Um, and also knowing that I was about to have to start paying back my student loans. Um, and I was also about to be kicked off my parents' health insurance because I was about to turn 26. Um, so that all kind of came together at the same point. Um, and knowing that my, my student loans would be put into um, deferment and that they wouldn't have any, in, the uh, interest would go into forbearance. Um, as well as having that living allowance and knowing that at the end of my term of service, I would have this um, education award that I could use to help me pay off my loans. Um, that was really great as well. Um, so I would say that the um, best things about my experience um, were definitely feeling like I was doing something meaningful. Um, I have always really loved working with kids. So this project was really great for that, but there's so many opportunities in AmeriCorps to do to give back to your community, to do something meaningful um, for the people around you in an area that you have interest in. Um, I also felt like I gained really valuable experience in my field. Um, as Emily mentioned, there's a lot of opportunities for professional development um, and also just getting more skills to like be able to put on my resume, more concrete experience of working with kids and working in, in education. Um, I feel like I did become a better educator. Um, and I also feel like with all of the professional development and trainings that we got to do um, as AmeriCorps members, I feel like I really became more culturally competent. Um, I learned a lot more about Madison and we did specific trainings to learn about how racism affected our students and how poverty affected our students. Um, and those are really invaluable. Um, and I feel like I've still used things that I learned in those trainings um, in my work and my life today. Um, I also just had a really fun year. Um, I, I met some really amazing people both at 
at my site where I was working at the elementary school, but also my AmeriCorps teammates. Um, that was a really awesome thing about the Schools of Hope program that you um, were working in conjunction with other AmeriCorps members who were serving at different schools in the area. So you could kind of, um, you know, problem solve together and bounce ideas off each other and going through the same um, experience at the same time. Um, and then also it was just a really fun group of people to hang out with. So we all became really close friends. Um, I met some of my best friends on the project and I'm still still friends with them today. Um, I think I, I already mentioned that I used the Ed Award to help pay off my student loans, which was huge. Um, and then it also led to future opportunities for me. I feel like I was set up really well to enter into um, my field after that because I had more experience working with kids, um, even though it was in an academic setting versus a museum setting. Um, I think that helped me secure a job. Um, I ended up working at the Madison Children's Museum for a couple of years, which was really fantastic. Um, and now I'm actually um, back working with Schools of Hope um, as a program assistant. So um, it's really thrilling to be able to be, to contribute to the project in this way as a staff member and continue to work with AmeriCorps members. Um, so honestly, the only thing I can say is I kind of wish that I had done AmeriCorps sooner. Um, I think that it would have been really great if I, like when I finished college, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do next. And so that would have been a really good time to think about doing AmeriCorps as well. Um, but also to know that there are people who do AmeriCorps right out of high school, right out of college, who take a gap year. We have members on the project this year who are taking a gap year, um, just or taking a break from college rather. Um, and then, you know, we had people on the project who had already done grad school or who were older, even retired people who wanted to do um, some service for their community and service AmeriCorps members. So it's just a really cool group of people, really cool network to be a part of. Um, and yeah, I think that that's about all I wanted to share. But um, like Emily said, we're happy to answer any questions you have about our project, Schools of Hope, um, or about AmeriCorps in general. Thanks so much for having us. I actually have a couple questions. Um, there were just a couple things I noticed that seem that were similar to Peace Corps and also dissimilar dissimilar to Peace Corps. And I noticed you mentioned, um, Annika, that you were interested in coming back to Madison. And for example, with Peace Corps, you can choose, you can to some extent choose which country you go to, um, not always, but to some extent you can kind of choose the region. And so I'm wondering with AmeriCorps, can you choose very specifically the exact project you want to work on? Or is it more, I want to be in Wisconsin or this city? How does that work? I can answer that. Um, yeah, I was going to say Emily can probably answer it more fully <laughs> than I can. <laughs> yeah, you actually pick specifically the projects that you're interested in. It's, um, you know, there's a there's a listing, a national listing of it. So you can go in and say, I want to see environmental programs in Colorado. That seems to be popular. Um, and you can see what programs there are, and then you would use your application to apply directly to those. <clears throat> um, so you get a chance to you know, interview with that program, hear about what they're doing. So yes, you do have a lot more control that way about um, exactly what you wanna be doing and, and where. So if, if that's one of your concerns, that's something that's, that's much easier. And then as a second question I had is with um, Peace Corps in general, but also some of the specific programs, you need a college degree and then sometimes they want to see a specific degree. And I think I heard that um, Annika mentioned that you can go while you're in college or before you go into college. So I'm wondering how the degrees work with AmeriCorps and whether there are certain projects that you need a more advanced degree and are there ones that you don't or is it just across the board different? Yeah, I actually don't know of any that require um, any kind of a certain degree. Um, I think their uh, high school graduation is a requirement or um, for some of our youth core programs who are specifically targeting students who um, haven't gotten their GED, um, that might not be a requirement for that. But, um, but no, there really isn't an educational requirement. It really is more about um, you know, motivation and wanting to do something. AmeriCorps really um, assumes that people will need to be trained and to get that professional development to really do their service. So um, as long as I think people are there with service-minded, 
really wanting to try their best. It's not always the easiest job in the world, right? Um, this year has been especially challenging for anyone working with schools um, or, or just schools in general, but a lot of the, the issues that we're targeting are not easy ones. And so I think that um, it, it's really more about making sure we're finding people who really are committed to this year of service and understand that it's, it's a little bit bigger than them, even if there's challenges. So I don't think there is a degree requirement. It looks like, is that uh, Ronald has a question? Yeah, how are you? It's nice to see everybody. I'm a returned Peace Corps volunteer and a retiree. And I am exploring sort of national service opportunities on the southern border. Uh, there are a number of nonprofits, a lot of them churches, uh, Lutheran Immigration and Relief Services. There's a national network. And I've also been looking at AmeriCorps. And I agree with you, the new website is pretty cool in terms of finding what opportunities are available and how to move forward. I'm wondering. Uh, if there's a special emphasis now on uh, working with asylum seekers uh, on the border, whether that's a, a big deal within AmeriCorps, whether there might be uh, application hints you could provide me that would let me flow through the system a little easier and, uh, and get going faster. Those are good questions and I'll do my best. Um, I am not an expert at the national level on AmeriCorps. Um, AmeriCorps typically does when uh, they um, ask, we have to all write grants, right, to get our, um, our funding. And I have not yet seen the, the priority funding for next year. So it very well could be that that is a priority. Um, they, AmeriCorps does try to be very responsive. It also could be that might be part of disaster relief efforts. I have not seen a lot of um, activity around that, but I do know that AmeriCorps just got um, quite a bit of money in the COVID relief bill that just got passed. So I'm hoping that they're gonna figure out a way to kind of get AmeriCorps members mobilized to be really responsive. But I, I don't know specifically, but I can, I can actually check. Um, and then the second part of your question, um, Although their website is great, they did not change the AmeriCorps application, which I have to say is not the most user-friendly. So I liked it when somebody said it was easy for the previous program. Um, the AmeriCorps application is a little bit cumbersome. I, you know, if you take some time to fill it out, um, you know, it is really easy then. You have your application, you comply to a bunch of different programs. Another way to kind of if you kind of want to bypass and get a little easier is um, find out if there's certain programs you're interested in and email those people directly. Like you could find Schools of Hope and just email me and I'm happy to explain more about the program and talk to you about it and kind of hopefully be able to slide you past um, some of the issues with our online system. They promise that's what they're going to use some of our COVID money on now. So hopefully we'll get a no, new that, application that, that, system. That is soon. exactly the kind of hint I was looking for. Okay. That if yeah, I try to contact the programs directly, I think you'll get a, a really directly, good response. If there's contact information there, I think that would be that would be real helpful. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, oh sorry. Um, so I think Carl, you will also be talking about AmeriCorps. Is that right? Uh, we were mainly going to let Emily and Annika go, but I can chime in one particular fun, helpful hint. Sure. Is yeah, that... I just want to miss you in case. No, that's okay. Uh, it may be helpful to know that most states, Wisconsin included, um, have a service site map that shows all of the service sites in that particular state. So if you're looking on the southern border and you pick a specific state that you're looking at, you may be able to find um, through that state's, uh, so for Wisconsin, it's Serve Wisconsin is the state and national headquarters for AmeriCorps State National in Wisconsin. And they have a service site map for all AmeriCorps programming locations within the state of Wisconsin. So you should be able to find something similar for most any state uh, that you might look at. Um, so hopefully that is helpful to put on your radar. Yeah, I've been looking and uh, it does appear to go, it sorts things by state. So uh, I think that's going to be a handy way to start. Thanks. 
I have a question for you too. I recently learned that there's a new AmeriCorps program in California out of the governor's office called the California Climate Action Corps. And it's completely focused on climate um, change issues, which is amazing. I mean, it's it's really, um, it's a small office right now, but they've, they're doing great work. They've got a volunteer a match software so people can get involved, whether, whether it's as a full as an actual um, AmeriCorps member or just as a community member who wants to do anything, just something to, to help uh, with that initiative. Is, do you, have you heard about it? And is there any likelihood that something like that would, might happen in Wisconsin? I have actually not heard of that, but I do know that um, environmental issues have been one of the main um, areas of, of focus for AmeriCorps. So I think you would find um, environmental based or um, uh, programs probably in every state. And I'm not sure if it's uh, exactly the same as that program, but that's definitely one of the filters you can use. And I, I'm sure that's where a lot of um, funding will be going towards uh, moving forward. Great, yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions about AmeriCorps before we move on? I just want to make sure we have enough time for our last two speakers. But um, yeah, if anyone does have any more questions and they kind of think of it later and they want to ask Annika or Emily um, or Carl or anything else, you can always throw it in the chat and we can try to get to them at the end. Um, but we'll now move on to just speaking about Peace Corps, and we'll have Kate and Katie speak. Um. Okay, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I can't see anybody now because I've got this whole thing going on, but uh, thank you everybody for coming. Um, it's been really great listening to everybody, uh, the, the similarities, the, 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 the way that the groups have a lot of over um, interaction and shared skill sets is really, really obvious to me anyway, as a return volunteer. Um, the UW Madison, in case anyone doesn't know yet, has been ranked number one for the last four years in a row. And we are number two all time since 1961. So we're uh, a good, campus to be associated with if you want to get a good Peace Corps related job. Uh, of course, in Peace Corps, you are working in the field, you're doing hands on, you've got two years to really get into a project and really develop some, some great skills. Uh, it's so important to, to do that in a time when, uh, well, <laughs> especially right now, everybody feels like it's in a virtual world. We are so ready to be out in the world again, right? But uh, it will happen, uh, it, including in Peace Corps and including in IIT and AmeriCorps. We will be back in, in person again soon. Uh, this is the education uh, uh, sector and the focus is on education. I just wanna point out that 40% of all Peace Corps jobs roughly are in education. So if you're at all interested in education as a career or even as a, something that you would perhaps consider, it's, this is a, a good place to be. It's also a good place to start with AmeriCorps or continue with AmeriCorps. People do that either on either side of their Peace Corps experience. <clears throat> right now, uh, there, are, there are actually 32 positions on the board, and I'm just showing a few of the education related. And right now, those 32 positions each represent hundreds of individual jobs. It's all very unclear because, I mean, it's sorted by region, but not by country within the region. That will happen, we, I'm told, within the next uh, week or two that we'll start seeing specific countries come up with, with specific jobs and detailed information. But Peace Corps is accepting applications now for people who are going to be ready to leave in late 2021 
or in early 2022. So if that's you, uh, come and see me. I'll help you through the application process or send me your, your um, uh, resume and motivation statement and I'd be happy to review them before you uh, uh, submit the online application. It'll go a lot faster that way. This is a quick look at the kinds of places that you might serve in Peace Corps. And some of these countries are no longer Peace Corps countries. There are, there are some new ones. This map changes on a roughly an, um, annual basis anyway, despite a, a COVID issue. So, but this is roughly where you might serve in Peace Corps. And I don't know what that pin is. The pin drop. <laughs> Eight, eight simple steps to Peace Corps application. Um, I'll only stay here because this is a long presentation in itself, but I'll only say that Peace Corps is a hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait all along the way. But the thing to know is that in normal times, and we're not in normal times, it takes from, six, from sorry nine to 12 months from apply to departure. So if you're graduating in May of 2022, or if you're graduating after that, you should be thinking about Peace Corps and, and starting to brush up your, your resume now. And again, I'm here to help. Again, this is education. Um, we've heard from IIP as a great way to get informate, to get experience. That's absolutely true. Um, and we've heard from AmeriCorps on another way to get experience, whether it's for Peace Corps or whether it's for anything else in, in life. Uh, these are uh, service industry jobs are so needed in this world. Um, I've, I promised to put in a plug for the School of Education BASES program. They are, uh, it's a program where you work with children in the Madison School District. There are over 1,200 homeless children in the Madison School District. And this is a service learning opportunity where people can um, uh, go into the school and get some classroom time and then some right now virtual school time with, with kids to tutor them and help them through anything that's needed, whether it's tutoring or could well imagine that it could be some emotional counseling as well. I want to just step back out here a second. I think that there's somebody in the group who has indicated that they have um, they are taking the the basis course. Is that correct? If you could unmute yourself and just make any comment at all on that. I took it last year. I don't know if anyone else is taking it right now, but um... I was able to do it before COVID and then we ended up having to stop halfway through last uh, the second semester, of course, but I don't know if anyone's in. How did you find it? What was your impression? Um, I really, really loved it. I genuinely think it's one of the most unique experiences that UW has to offer. Um, it's just so amazing and the professor for that course is also really, really amazing. And he um, is, it's just an amazing course. And because like it's, you do have assignments, of course, like you write some essays and um, there's in-class assignments, but of course half the class is like outside. So it's a lot of service learning, which is really cool. It's the whole class is set up very differently from normal kind of classes that you would normally take. And um, it, it's just a really unique experience. And I think it can kind of help a person realize whether they want to go into a similar career later on, or if it's something that's not necessarily for them. But regardless, it's, I would recommend it for anyone who might be interested in Peace Corps or AmeriCorps um, or anything else that we spoke about today. Great. Yeah, they're taking applications now for the 2021-22 uh, academic year. So if you've got if you've got another school year in front of you and you'd like to gain some experience in that area, and whether it's in education or not, I mean, would you say, Sarah, that it was that it did include some like emotional counseling or 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 anything like that? Yeah. So I wouldn't really say it was a 
Jaka I mean, I would say that you, it, it's unique because, you know, hopefully they'll be able to resume the ability to go see the kids in person in class, but it's not really so much about teaching them as it is about being just kind of there to mentor them. And, you know, they might be going through some things outside of school or in school and being able to have a consistent adult um, throughout that year that they can just kind of feel free to speak to about whatever they want to, whether that's school related or home related. Um, so yeah, it's just a really, really good mentoring experience. So I would say it's a bit of a mixture maybe between like counseling and um, I mean, sometimes I would help with homework, but mm -hmm. it's just a very, it's a very mixed experience. So you kind of have to mold yourself and your strengths to the child and kind of feel out what they need the most um, and then go from there. Yeah, it's really struck me as an amazing program. I had a chance to present very briefly to their class a week or two ago and, and it, was, it was fun. Um, I'm gonna skip over, this is actually a video, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm gonna skip over that because we oops, really don't have a lot of time. Um, and then, I, I just want to give a shout out to SuccessWorks for helping out and helping me organize this whole presentation and getting people together and helping with some of the outreach and the communi uh, communication and promotion. So I'll be sending out, I'll be sending out this, uh, these slides with information to, to all of you who have been here today. And of course, the, um, the video will also be available if anyone's interested. Uh, it'll probably also be available in segments for each of the IIP and um, um, AmeriCorps and then Peace Corps segments. And with that, I need to get out of here because we're, um, I hope everyone can stay late because you have to hear Katie Garnes. <laughs> She's uh, um, had a lifetime of, of, of education focused work. Thank you for that introduction. Um, and thank you all for having me here. I'm excited to share a little bit about my experience and my Peace Corps experience. Can you see the slideshow okay? Yes. Great. Um, so I'll give you a little brief introduction to myself and then speak a little bit more about Peace Corps. So I graduated from Madison in 2013 and went straight into working with Teach for America. So another AmeriCorps program, but slightly different service requirements and benefits. Um, happy to answer questions about that later if people are interested in Teach for America. Um, but I taught for two years at the elementary level with my placement school. So TFA is a two-year commitment and I worked as a second and third grade um, reading teacher at an autism inclusion school in the DC area. And then I continued teaching for another two years in the DC area. So I had about three and a half years of teaching under my belt when I decided that I needed to take a break from the US education system, um, but didn't necessarily want to stop working or pause my career. Um, so I decided to look into opportunities to teach abroad. It also kind of felt like a moment where if I didn't live abroad again, then I might not do it for a long time. Um, so I started looking at different opportunities and had kind of always had Peace Corps in the back of my mind, but was maybe not um, motivated right out of, out of undergrad to go into Peace Corps. Um, and in particular, when I graduated, Peace Corps was still in the, you go wherever we, we place you um, selection mode. Um, and so when I came back four years later, you could now select a position, select a country and be a little bit more specific about what you might want. Um, so I specifically applied to be a primary English teacher trainer in Colombia. I think at the time that was the only position that I applied for. Um, my application process was actually rather fast. I applied in May. Um, and then had the interview a couple weeks later and then got my invitation maybe a week after the interview. 
so in a month had decided that I was going to Columbia. Um, of course, after that, then you have a long process of getting your medical and legal clearance. So I finally left for Columbia um, in January of 2017. Uh, and I was placed in a small town outside of Cartagena. Um, so if you know Colombia, there it has a few different regions. At the time, Peace Corps was only operating in the Caribbean coastal region. So you can kind of see Barranquilla and Cartagena on the map. Barranquilla was Peace Corps headquarters. And we were all clustered in this kind of region right around there uh, for safety reasons. And I was placed in a town called San Estanislao, um, but more informally known as Arenal. So right along that river, about an hour from Cartagena. Um, arriving in country, this is a picture of both Columbia and then my fellow cohorts of volunteers. Arriving in Columbia, as many of you probably know, if you're already interested in Peace Corps, you have a three month training period where you're kind of on trial and you're learning the language and the culture and what your work is going to look like. Um, and so during that time, I lived with a training host family in a town that we had four small towns clustered together. Um, and we lived in a town with a handful of other volunteers. There was about five other volunteers in the same town as I was. Um, and we were really a mix of experiences. There were people like myself who had already been teachers in the US or teachers abroad, several people who had taught in South Korea before. And then there were also a mix of people straight out of undergrad or who had maybe done a year of AmeriCorps service. Um, one of the other girls in my cohort was actually a Madison graduate who had just finished um, school in May and then applied to Peace Corps and had come to Columbia with me in January. Um, so really a wide variety of experience levels. Uh, and I would say that there were benefits to, to both. So for me, it definitely made me more comfortable in a classroom, maybe faster than some of the volunteers who hadn't had any teaching experience. But I also came with my own ideas of how a classroom should be run. Um, and that at times hindered me because really we were there to support and work with Colombian English teachers. Uh, and their classroom management styles is very different than American styles, whereas I really wanted all of my students to raise their hand. That was just not part of the school culture. Um, and it's very much more of a, of a call and response culture. Um, and I had to adjust, whereas volunteers who came with less maybe direct teaching experience were able to fit into that role a little bit faster. Um, as I mentioned before, after training, I was placed in a rural town, um, Arinal, which is about an hour from Cartagena. Um, this is a picture of my house. Um, so we, I had a traditional style house uh, with a kind of more modern style house in the back. Um, so we had the traditional palm, palm leaf roof. Um, and I lived with a host family for my whole two years in Colombia. It was required to live with host families um, due to safety reasons. And I was the only I was the first and only volunteer in my town, um, which was I loved being the first. It meant that there was no one who for them to compare me to, um, and I could kind of set my own path um, and expectations for how I was going to work with the school. Um, this uh, second picture here is a picture of the river across the river from me was another volunteer, um, but there was no bridge between us. So to get between the towns, they would canoe you over in the boats and kind of push off um, and float with the current to cross the river um, going both ways. Um, Culture is a big part of your Peace Corps experience. It was a huge part of mine and part of my 
my daily life there. Um, the food was great. This is a, a typical dish that my students made me um, in that kind of first week of me being at my placement site. Um, and this other photo is me during Carnival. Colombians love to celebrate anything that they can. Um, school was often paused for two or three weeks in the middle of the summer um, to celebrate Carnival. And that was parades and pageants and concerts. Um, in December around Christmas time, they also had concerts and parties. Um, Columbia, Columbia is a really warm and extroverted and welcoming culture, at least the, the coast of Columbia. Um, they say that they're as warm as the temperature. It was probably 90 degrees and humid every day for my whole two years. Um, and my work in Columbia uh, was, as I mentioned before, as an English teacher trainer. Although I will say that the job descriptions on the Peace Corps website are definitely more of a rough outline of what you might be doing than exactly what you will do. Um, so I co-taught English with both secondary and primary teachers in my local school. We had three English secondary teachers and then four or five primary teachers who were required to teach English. At the primary level, the teachers were required to teach English whether they spoke English or not. So a lot of my work there was just helping the teachers be able to pronounce English words or know enough basic English to be able to teach, you know, colors, numbers, animals, some basic vocabulary um, and games to engage the younger kids at the secondary level. All Colombian high schoolers have to take a, an English exam. Um, and for many of the more elite public universities in Colombia, you have to be able to reach a certain English level. So English was a really important priority for the Colombian schools and the Colombian government. Um, and I co-taught with my Colombian counterparts from the sixth to 11th grade level. Um, on outside of the school, I also taught a few community English classes. So the far right picture is me in a classroom, but the middle picture is me with my community adult students. So I offered free English classes to any one 16 plus in my community who was interested in learning some English. And I generally ran those in like six to eight week cycles um, and then offered a certificate at the end. This is at our, I think this one must be at our Christmas party. Um, and that was a, a, one of my most rewarding experiences because those were people who were just genuinely excited about learning English and learning something about American culture. They were choosing to be there. Um, and it was just a really fun and great group. I also ran a, a similar English, but for 10 and under at the local library. And I did that. This class ran twice a week and the, the one for younger kids ran once a week. Um, and then my other kind of secondary project, they call them in Peace Corps, was to work with a girls empowerment club and camp called GLOW, which is done um, at, in many different Peace Corps countries. Um, when I was in Colombia, it was their second or third year of running a camp, but the first year that we were running clubs. Um, and so it was a really great experience to get to do build a club from scratch with a Colombian counterpart who was working in the mayor's office in my town um, and then a bunch of girls from my school. And we ran a glow club that talked about things like self-esteem and sexual health. Um, and then they could apply to go to glow camp. So this is a picture of me with three of the girls from my community who went to, went to camp, um, which was a week long overnight camp and a really, a great experience. So with that, I'll stop my share um, and just say that. So then after, at the end of Peace Corps, uh, 
you have close of service conference and everyone freaks out about what they're going to do next um, and no one knows at that point where they're going and what they're going to do uh, and I ended up going to graduate school after Peace Corps um, and so I moved back to the US um, did my master's in education policy and management and now I'm working at a nonprofit that does uh, technical assistance, professional development, um, and support for schools undergoing school improvement or trying to implement uh, improvement or innovation efforts at the, either the district or the school level. And I am happy to take any questions that you might have about Peace Corps, about Teach for America, and about anything that might come before or after. I really enjoyed the, the conversation. It was um, it's always interesting to me. I mean, I didn't serve as an you know, educator, so it's always interesting to me to hear different, different pieces. Um, so you, you were just talking a little bit about the close of service conference and, and a, lot, a lot of times people plan a COS trip uh, that before they return home, but you did not, is that correct? I did not. So I had actually studied abroad for a year in Peru um, while I was doing my undergrad at Madison. Um, and during that time, because I did a year, I had about a two or three month summer break in between semesters and had done kind of spent those two months traveling around South America. So by the time I had finished my service in Colombia, I kind of felt like I had seen quite a bit of, of South America and was just ready to, to come home. Yeah. Time flies. Um, but sometimes it also stretches. So <laughs> it's this weird time warp of Peace Corps. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So something that um, some people may be wondering, I guess, is when you left the Peace Corps, did you immediately know that you wanted to go to grad school? And if you did, kind of what was the process of transitioning from Peace Corps to graduate school? I did know that I wanted to go to graduate school. Um, I had had to apply for graduate school while I was still in Peace Corps. Um, most applications were due maybe January and my close of service was mid-March. Uh, I think Sorry, what was the second half of the question? Sure, um, just kind of the transition from Peace Corps to graduate school. Right, right. Um, the transition was hard when I first came back to the US. Definitely there's a, they talk about reverse culture shock and they try to prepare you for it. There's nothing quite like coming back from two years of living in a rural part of the world and you know, I would walk into a Target or something and just be very overwhelmed by the the space um, and the choices. Uh, and you miss the the people and the culture that you've just left. Um, and some things feel different than they've ever felt before. Um, so I think there was a, definitely some culture shock for those first couple of months coming back. Um, but going into grad school itself, that I had a couple months before I started grad school and going into grad school itself felt fairly easy. There were other P return Peace Corps volunteers in grad school with me um, and it was very easy to connect with them. And I haven't met anyone who's done Peace Corps and not stayed in touch with someone, if not all of the people that they served with. Um, and so they are a great support system as you make transitions in the next year, the year after as well. Is 
Does anyone else have any questions for Katie or Kate or any general questions at all? Even just about PCA? Okay. So there's a question in the chat. Yeah, so Barrett is wondering about the application process and she's, and she's in the middle of doing it now. So what does it mean to be under consideration for a specific position? And what are the next steps from there? That's really exciting, Barrett. Um, what it means is that Peace Corps is getting ready to, to start interviewing people. And um, if you are under consideration, that's not an invita invitation to interview yet, but it's, it's a strong indicator that you are at the top of the, of the list. Um, and as soon as they're ready, they'll, you'll be one of the first people to be invited for an interview. If you have any questions about it, you can start with me if you want um, with more detail, but I, I know that they send those out with a no reply on them so that you can't just reply to the, to the email and get an answer. But it is possible to send an email to the placement desk officer for the country. And I can get that email address for you if you want to contact them for any reason at all. If you want to say, why was I nominated for the Dominican Republic in education when I really, my, my experience in academics were in agriculture. I mean, this is another, that's a true story from another person exactly in your same situation. Um, so you can make, raise some questions without jeopardizing your, your status at all. And, I, and I'm available on Mondays from four to six and on Thursdays from 11 to one, if you'd like to uh, check the peacecorps.wisc.edu website, the events calendar there, and just get the uh, Zoom link from that. Any other questions? Thank you all for those who are able to stay longer. It's great. I mean, it's really, I know it's been, it, it, was, it was an aggressive schedule, I have to admit. <laughs> Having three unique um, agencies and speakers with multiple speakers in each, but it was so informative, I think, for everybody. So thank you all for staying. <laughs>